Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up. Good Wednesday morning, halfway through. We look at us, you guys, just different colored tops. We really look like we're starting to get together and get along. How's everyone feeling today? I mean, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Shams. All right. Sham Sharania, Stadium yeah. Insider, Chandler Parsons, <laughs> Lou Williams. My name is Michelle, and we got a lot of hoops to talk, some weirdness last night, also some weird and good and bad news. So let's do some Celtics Bucks first. Uh, the Bucks did win. That four game losing streak is done. 104 91. Giannis had 15 points, eight rebounds, seven assists, but we'll get back to him in a second. Pat Bev with 20 and 10. Tatum and Brown combining for 36 points. And this is the, the asterisk an NBA record low. Two free throws, two free throws in an entire NBA game. I have never seen such a thing. But Shams, we got to get back to the Giannis part of things. Obviously, he left this one in the third. Uh, what's the latest with Giannis? I mean, this is just a massive injury to Giannis and to the Kumpo. Uh, MRI he had overnight. The best case scenario came from it. No Achilles tendon damage. So his Achilles is fine. He does have a strained calf, though, and that brings an indefinite timetable for him. Usually these types of calf strains can be one to two weeks at the least. There's no real expectation around the Bucks that he's going to play in any of the final three regular season games. He, he's going to have to get treatment, start his rehab, and see exactly how long he'll be out just based on the treatment and his rehab. Clearly that, that puts his playoff status uh, in, a, in about a weekend from now, about a week and a half from now, in question uh, calf strains, Lou, Lou Will, Chandler, obviously very familiar with those. And especially the way that he just had it. Um, this is someone that's dealt with a lot of uh, issues with that left leg. He had, he's had left Achilles uh, tendonitis. He's had hamstring tendinopathy in that leg. And now he has this calf strain. Uh, I think if you're the Bucks, if you're Giannis Antetokounmpo, he, we know he's come back from injuries quick before. He had that knee injury around the NBA Finals in 2021. He came back, that was supposed to be a several week injury. He came back to play in the NBA Finals uh, miraculously, way ahead of schedule. But this is an injury, a muscle injury, where you, I think if you're the Bucks, if you're Giannis, you have to take a cautious approach with it. And um, it's gonna be an indefinite absence for him. We'll see how the rehab goes. I think I speak for everyone when I say that sucks. Um, this Bucks team was, you know, trying to figure things out as it was, Chandler. But what's your reaction to this news? Yeah, that's brutal. And and the worst thing is he's been nursing this hamstring, right? So the fact that it started with the hamstring, and like Sean said, he's had all these issues with this left leg, and now the calf is it seems like the last to go. It's tough. And these non-contact injuries, these are always the scariest to me. When there's no one hitting him, you can just see him running. Mm -hmm. That looks like a torn Achilles to me. Like that's usually what happens. So that he dodged a bullet there, yes. But I mean, this is just brutal timing. Again, we know how much they've been through this season. We know Giannis is their heartbeat, is their everything. So without him, this is a this is a huge hole that I don't think they can fill it in the playoffs. And I don't even and I'm talking as far as first round goes, but and caps are tough too. Lou knows these things linger. These aren't this isn't just gonna heal. So I don't see him playing the last couple of games here of the season. And depending on how quickly this thing can heal and, and the treatment he can get done, it looks like a stretch to even play in the first round. So who knows? But this is just a brutal blow to Milwaukee because obviously we know how important Giannis is to, to this team. Yeah, Lou, the, the non-contact stuff is horrible because you're just like, what just happened? And it's never good. Yeah, like like Chandler just said, it's it's concerning, you know, especially with non-contact. A lot of times in the game, you can pinpoint what happened when there when there's contact, when there's a play where you can kind of see. But you know, he's been nursing a couple of different things throughout the course of this season, whether it's his hamstring, the calf, uh, like we we thought it was an Achilles, just based on how he reacted. And and these are these are areas of your body that's going to linger, that's going to be problematic for him. So at least going to be out the next couple of games to finish this season, looking at the first round too, especially if this is something that's been bothering him, the Milwaukee Bucks got to be very cautious about bringing him back. So this is, this is going to be, this is going to be problematic for the Milwaukee Bucks. 
Yeah, and you know what? And and the crazy thing is, we keep talking about how the standings are so tight. The standings are so close. Right. Health of this Milwaukee Bucks team is way more important than who they draw first round. So when you look at the big picture here, Giannis being healthy, Chris Middleton being healthy, Patrick Beverly being healthy, that's way more important whether they play the Pacers or the Sixers or the Heat, whoever it may be. So they need to get this guy back because when they are healthy, I think they can beat all three of those teams. And without Giannis, I don't know if they can beat any of them. Such an extreme. I guess when we're talking about these things, we are always assuming, you know, best case scenario, the health is good. When Giannis, one of the biggest names in the game, goes down, that obviously changes every single prediction you could possibly make. Um, but the Bucks before this, were trying to figure out new things to do, Shams. We saw a little bit of that last night. Pat Bev gets the start over Beasley. What was the final decision-making straw here for the team? Well, they they lost four games in a row. They had the, the the team film session, and Doc Rivers, Patrick Beverly is a guy that he'd known, he's coached before. And last time, I mean, the results do speak for themselves. Twenty points for Pat Bev, ten rebounds, four of eight on three pointers. Obviously, he gives you an edge defensively. Um, Beasley was forty one percent from three point range this season, ranks ninth in threes. So we know what he's provided from an offensive perspective, three point shooting perspective, spacing the floor around Damian Lillard, Chris Middleton, and Giannis, but. Be, Beverly obviously adds a different type of, uh, of, 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 of uh, at least defensively, a, a punch to this team. So um, that's the decision Doc Rivers made. It's crazy because I'm about to ask this, but again, it's, uh, it's underneath the Giannis cloud for now, Lou. But this move last night looked okay. Uh, playoff time, does it make that big a difference? We're going to see. You know, if... if we talked about Doc Rivers and his film sessions and all of that and, and, and addressing concerns. If their concern was energy and not getting off to good starts when it comes to playing up pet when it comes to playing with pace, having that defensive presence, putting Pat Bev in, in the starting lineup that could remedy that. And it showed last night. I don't know if we're gonna we're gonna rely on Pat to give you 20 and 10 every night, but he's gonna be effective. He's gonna give you energy and he's gonna be out there giving you everything that he has on a night in and night out basis. And so last night, that was a that was a sample size of what he can bring to the table in a starting lineup for this Bucks team. And it worked out. So, you know, hopefully this is something that sticks with the Milwaukee Bucks because it's it's worked. And also now you got Beasley and you got Connington coming off the bench and you got guys that you, it gives you a balance now with Pat Bev and that lineup uh, moving into the uh, playoff picture. So we'll see if this this is something they do moving forward. Yeah, I know. Lou, it's, yeah, go ahead. Lou, you nailed it. To me, it's it's good coaches make adjustments, right? So this point of the season, you lose four in a row. You have to switch it up, whether it is defensive purposes or shooting purposes or just straight energy. And last night, Patrick Beverly, he had, you know, no steals, no blocks, but we know the impact that he has on the defensive end. He pressures you. He gets in you. He talks. He, he kind of just, he pumps up his own teammates watching him defend and pick up guys <laughs> 94 feet. So I think it's a great switch. Lou also touched on it. I think it really balances and deepens and strengthens their bench. So now they have, you know, they can go nine, 10 deep when, you know, if Gallinari's healthy, if Crowder's healthy. So I, I like this move a lot. I don't think we're going to see a lot of 20 and 10 games from Pat, but this is a, th this was a great, great move. And I think this is going to stick for them just to give them more of a balanced attack. And we know they've had woes on the defensive end and he's arguably their best defender. So why not give him a shot and put him in there? All right, Chandler, this next part, this will be a bar trivia answer for quite some time, I would think. So Celtics, the first team in NBA history to only to, to go without an entire free throw in the entire game. I, I don't even know what that sounds or looks like moving forward. Um, the previous record was 11. So that's kind of crazy. I, we can look at the changes in officiating here. We can do whatever you want. But when you saw this, what did you think as a as a player of this game, seeing that kind of a number or lack thereof? Uh a typo like I, there, there's there's <laughs> no there's no way this happens and i don't care about the rule change i don't care about it's less physical the refs been we've been all over the refs all year long this is crazy the fact that there's this 48 minutes in a game and and we're talking about star players too playing with tatum <laughs> and brown and big names Giannis, and so that's it's unheard of because I understand that these teams, like Giannis went out in the second half, but you know how downhill he plays and how physical he is. He didn't get one free throw in those first three quarters. Patrick Beverly didn't, you know, get a little too aggressive on the defensive end and, and foul someone while they're shooting. Uh, 
It's ridiculous. I've never seen this. I could argue this is the craziest stat we've seen all year long. Yeah. I don't think this, I don't think I don't know that this ever happens again, especially with two really, really good teams with star power. The first and second seed, it's just it's unheard of. It's mind blowing. And I, I don't see this happening again anytime soon. But it, it's it's crazy. I don't Something know how like this zero free throw attempts. Zero. Zero. I, zero. I could, I could be wrong, but watching this game in real time last night, I saw one team that was motivated to stay in second place, and I saw another team that was motivated to help them stay in second place. <laughs> I thought this was a very uh, non-contact, I'm stay out your way, you stay out of my way, let's all get out of here in one piece, let's shoot a bunch of jump shots, then let's get up out of here and listen, we have we have like-minded goals here, let's get out of here. It, it, missed, that, it missed that bang that we wanted. Uh, to mm. see in this game, it missed that competitiveness that we that we were looking forward to in this game. But you know, Chandler and I we touched on it yesterday. When you get to the end of the season, it it comes down to chess. It comes down to moving chess pieces across the board. And I thought we saw that from the Boston Celtics a little bit last night, where this game didn't matter as much as it, it did to the <laughs> Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah. By the way, the irony of just get out of each other's way and then Giannis getting hurt with non-contact. With nothing. While, yeah. All those no fouls getting called is pretty crazy, man. But, Lou, you could accidentally get fouled and get yeah, to the free like, a, a bonus something, bro. This is nuts. Yeah. I would love to but, have been a fly on the wall in the rest room after this game. Just, like, what were they thinking or talking I'm about? pretty sure they were happy. It was a light night for them. <laughs> It was a chill yeah. night for them. It wasn't a lot of controversy. I'm sure they were they were yeah, happy. This, yeah, this happens in the playoffs. You're going to see some coaches getting fined for some not too <laughs> nice things they're going to say about the officiating. But Missoula, Celtics, they don't. We said before this game, I'm surprised actually Tatum and Brown even played the minutes they played, 37 and 35 minutes. I'm surprised they stayed in that long because this game meant nothing to them. I, I, it took me a second to realize, like, there haven't been, there haven't been any free throws. Like it wasn't even, it didn't register. And then the thing, the, the flash came through and I was like, how's that possible? So yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe you can get through a game without having to have too many free throws. I didn't hate it. Uh, Warriors yeah, Lakers was the big one last night. Yeah, I know, right? It's like peaceful. Uh, this was big. And the Warriors took advantage, beating the Lakers. 134-120. They had 26 threes. Goodness, Steph Curry with 23 points, LeBron with 33, Draymond 15, Clay Thompson with 27 points. Right now, Golden State's won eight of nine. They are a half game back of the Lakers. They also own the tiebreaker. So the destiny control is all theirs. Chandler, you're first. Who finishes with the better seed, Lakers or Warriors? I, I hate this just because I've been right. I've been Lakers, Lakers, Lakers. But my God, speaking of typos, I thought it was a typo when I saw Anthony Davis is out with a headache last night. And, yeah. and this important game. Uh, it's hard not to go Warriors. The fact all the stats you just said that they're tied, that they got they own the tiebreaker. Both their schedules coming up are extremely light. So I think they could both win out. Um, which would I guess would make the Warriors kind of have the advantage here owning the tiebreaker. And it's just I knew last night, as soon as I saw Anthony Davis was out, I said, oh, okay, this game's it's a wrap. I did not think the Warriors were gonna go berserk like they did last night and go twenty six of four. If anyone goes twenty six of forty one from the three, they're probably gonna win the basketball game. Um and this is this is again, this is what we talked about all season long. You just can't count the Warriors out because Clay Thompson can still go and give you 27. Steph Curry, we know what he can do. Then you show flashes of Andrew Wiggins and the things that he did a couple of years ago when they won a championship. That all starts coming together in a game, and you have Draymond doing his thing, and then the young guys are contributing. This is why they are a scary team. This is why that you can't ever count out the Warriors, and you definitely don't want to play them in the first round of the playoffs. So and now I got a new answer. I'm going with the Warriors. <laughs> We've changed. Yay. Lou, are you no, changing he, anything? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not staying. Hell of a game by the Warriors last night. They look like the Warriors of old. They look like the team that's mm -hmm. been a championship caliber team that's dominated over the past decade with the three-point shooting. But for me, 26 made, 26 made three-pointers. Uh, Draymond Green shooting out of his mind. Klay Thompson looked like the Clay of old. Steph Curry looked like himself. And with all of that said, the Lakers were still in this game. They still had opportunities to stay close. They never were getting blown out. Well, late in the game, it got a little out of control. But other than that, when the Warriors were making these big runs, the Lakers were still making runs in themselves 
making it a five, six point game. They were lingering around in this game and still had some opportunities. So I feel like next week, if they got to redo this all over again, we may not see 26 made threes in the way that they play. And if this game is played at crypto, I still like the Lakers to win this game. I mean, maybe you could argue that the Lakers feel very confident because I, I guess AD had maybe the same flu-like stuff that yeah, LeBron that had. Yeah. yeah, so but it's like, all right, it, it is what it is. They remind me of Jason from Friday the 13th, the Warriors do. Like, you think they're dead, but then there's 11 more movies. So you're like, okay, wait a minute. Uh, Draymond Green, as he does like to do, talked a little bit, said they are very confident about their postseason chances. Um, you know, there's one thing to get past the play and get in there, all that good stuff, Lou. But as far as a long postseason run, realistically, how confident should they be? Listen, and, and again, he should, right? When you have success, that comes with some arrogance. That comes with the feeling that at any moment, I can turn this thing around and we can get going, especially when you still have the core of a lot of that success. When you have a state, when you have a Steph Curry and a Klay Thompson next to you and you're Draymond Green, the history that you guys have been able to make together, you're, no matter what your standings are, when the playoffs start, I still feel very confident in my abilities. And that show last night with how they played. They played great. They've won the last eight out of nine games. They're rolling. They, they're really confident in their abilities. Draymond isn't saying anything wrong. They feel like they can beat anybody. They hadn't shown throughout the course of the year, but the playoffs is a different beast. So I don't I don't have any problem with him saying this. Yeah, this isn't this isn't a crazy. I mean, everyone on the Timberwolves, everyone on the Mad, everyone on the Lakers should think this way, should talk this way. So there's nothing wrong with this. And the way they've played lately, winning eight of their last nine games, they they should be confident and they should have, you know, momentum going forward into this play in tournament. And again, I think this last night, not having Anthony Davis on the floor, that's not the that's not the Los Angeles Lakers. So I do think the question was who's going to finish with a better record. And I now think it's going to be the Warriors with basically the tiebreaker and their upcoming schedule, but don't get it twisted. I think no matter where this game is, whether it's in San Fran or whether it's in LA, this is going to be the game of the play. And this is the game that everyone's going to watch. And it's going to be an absolute dog fight, assuming that both teams are fully healthy, but the Warriors, they get the, this is why they're scary. They can get hot and hit 20, 25, 26 threes in a game. Draymond Green was five of seven from the three. From the three <laughs> last night. What like, when does that, that have to happen? So that, yeah, first I mean, five in a row. yeah, like when they're doing this, they're really, really tough to beat. That would suck for a young team like Oklahoma City, whoever, to, to get a Warriors also, team that comes in that hot. <laughs> also, Michelle, when I saw this headache thing, you know, there's like these things going around LA. There's like these eclipse, these eclipse headaches. Oh, the afterthoughts went, of looking up. I went on a whole rabbit hole, and I think he missed a game <laughs> with an eclipse headache. No, he did. Well, I mean, uh, he's he's, they said he had nausea and all types of stuff, man. That's part of it. Sounds like a migraine guy. Yeah, it does oh, not sound like a hangover. <laughs> God. Sounds no, like but if he, he was could be. Wasted. No, if he looked up at the eclipse and who didn't, maybe he had the uh, the after effects of all that. Or he's a migraine dude. Migraines will knock you out, man. Sometimes you just got to go to the dark. I think Chandler needs to investigate this. I know, Chandler, Chandler, Chandler you're there. He needs to I'll investigate. dive in and I'll get back to you. <laughs> go, go find him. Tell us what he got. All right, the other games around the league happening. Uh, Minnesota. Oh, Minnesota. Anthony Edwards dropping a career high 51. Uh, a 21-point comeback win. I always pick the wrong games with the big comebacks. They got over the Wizards. 17 to 29 from the field. 6 to 13 from threes. 11 of 11 from the free throw line. That's more like it. Also, that means the T-Wolves are still atop the West standings. Uh, this, this performance. I mean, what else can we say about Anthony Edwards? What? <laughs> what can we say? It's just the... Him holding up the 50, 256. By the way, I can't wait to see what he does tonight. Because the reporter asked him after the game, you got Denver tonight. Are you excited? Are you got enough left? And he said, <laughs> hell yeah, to the crowd. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, but yeah, this was an insane game. I mean, it was an efficient game. He was perfect from the stripe, 17 to 29 from the field. He was getting to the rim. He was making his pull up. It was awesome. He, he's been the fun, the most fun, electrifying player in the league this year outside of Wimby. Uh, it, it's 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 really, really fun to watch. And I just love everything about this dude. I love his <laughs> interviews. I think he's hilarious. Um, and I'm really interested to see how he follows it up tonight against Denver. To be young again. Does this have any implications? Is this a, is this a game this important? 
Hell yeah, they could get number Hell one seed. Yeah. Massive game for number one. Yeah, this, this probably is, this is a big one. one seed tonight. Do you like that, really? Lou? Does that get you more excited? Yeah, I'm loving it. I was I was about to say he might rest tonight, but now knowing mm -hmm. that they still, I, I thought they had it locked up. I, I I was wrong. I'm looking at the standings here. Yeah, this is this is a big game. Hopefully, he carries that momentum over and get him over the edge. Yeah, this is. Uh, I mean, he's young. Like the fact that we don't even have to consider that he might load manage. Like we just we know he'll be out there, and it's good. We got some tweets to show, however, because uh, Carl Anthony Towns, Shams. Carl Anthony Towns. Is it possible we might see him? You the one. <laughs> yeah. Carl, Carl Anthony Towns is going to play any day now. He, he's expected to return in one of these final three regular season games that the Timberwolves had from what I'm have from what I'm told. They play tonight in Denver. They play Friday at home against Atlanta and then Sunday at home against Phoenix. Um, he could play as soon as tonight. That's the realm of possibility. We'll see. He's already scrimmaged a couple times. Five on five with the Timberwolves. Uh, he looks great. He's been fully cleared for contact, fully cleared for five on five, full contact. So his return is imminent. He's attacked his rehab. He had that torn meniscus in early March. He's coming back in just a little over one month. So impressive return uh, that Carl Anthony Towns is about to make. I was going to say that Phoenix game could be something, but remember when they had four points last night at, at one moment in like the first half? So I don't know what that, that are. Sports science. It's like the third time we've talked about somebody with a season ending injury that's coming back in like a month, six weeks. So shout out to the new sports science world. I, I'm, I'm excited for these new guys. It is crazy too. Cause like if I tore my meniscus around the same time as this guy's did, I would feel pressure that I need to play like, and I need to be on the same yeah. time as them. You know what I mean? Like if I'm cat, I'm like, damn, Joel's already back. Like, you know what I mean? So it's almost like a competition of rehab now of who can get back the soonest. It's bonkers. That science is cool. Uh, Shams, thank you. Love you. Mean it. See you manana. When we come back, Rockets broadcaster Ryan Hollins joins the show. Oh, there Ryan. he is. He looks so serial. <laughs> we'll be back. Word that, word that, baby girl. Let me see. Money in the bag. Ten years in the league and now broadcasting for the Houston Rockets. Ryan, how did you like your hype video, Ryan? <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm feeling myself right now. Okay. They 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 act like they forget I even played basketball sometimes, man. <laughs> Show that to all the kids so that they know that this is real. Uh he's been broadcasting for the Rockets for a minute now. And um, yeah, I want to just get into it because this team, this team was kind of fun and they made quite the comeback and they improved their win total by 17. And for a, a hot second there, thought they were going to catch the Warriors. So you have a front row seat night in, night out. What have you seen as far as improvement with this squad? Man, um, the, the three-headed horse right here came into uh, Houston. Uh, first off, Ime Udoka. I think he's the best coach in basketball. He's right up there, uh, obviously. I like to compare him. If Pop was a former player, if Pop played some years in the league, that's what Ime is, okay? If that makes sense. Then he's a dog. He's he's leading the league in text. Come on, fellas. You know when your coach get a tech, he ride for you, you want to go and hoop. He, got the, he has the X's and O's, and he just brought a toughness to Houston where he's teaching these guys how to play and his show. Houston is that team that you don't want to match up with. Um, and then to me, what's even more impressive is the team was able to go on that streak Without Al Prince Shingoni, you could argue Al P has been the, the best player on the team. That Jalen got hot. You could say he's one of the hottest players in the whole NBA. But that's just E man, the next man up type of mentality. Fred Van Fleet has changed changed our ball club from one of the worst teams uh, hmm. in turnovers to arguably the one of the best, if I'm not mistaken, the best in Rockets history with an assist to turnover ratio as a team for for a franchise. So that's huge. Uh, the, the team would have 20 plus turnovers. It's like there's no way you win with turning the ball over. And then Dylan Brooks has just turned everybody into villains. Uh, our guys talk trash. They're chippy. They're elbowing. And I remember the first couple of games in preseason when Dylan played, like and like you have four guys playing at one speed, and then Dylan will be going wild. And it took a while for the Rockets kind of respond and say, okay, that's what it is. That's how. Uh, how we play. So those three have absolutely been culture changers here in Houston, and I can't be more excited. I know this season's not over, but next season, oh, man, it, it, it's going to be one special one. Yeah, next season, are you thinking playoffs next season for sure? 
Don't have me quoting nothing, Beetle. That's not that's not for me. That's for the players to do. But um, now you just said all be that to not want to be a playoff team. Oh my hey, god! Hey, hey, come, come on, I'll be very, I'll be very surprised if it didn't happen. Hey, for those who don't know, when me and Lou played in the G League, our coach out sent me my cree. He will talk about the opposing team. He go, I'm just licking my chops when I see somebody <laughs> come around. So me and Lou see each other through the career. Man, we go, Lou, I'm about to, I'm about to have problems with you tonight, man. He was in Philly. I'd be in Boston, LA. We go at it, man. So uh, good stuff there, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about Tari Eason. You know, we, you know, we got to talk about it. It was a beautifully done moment, but a moment where we all went, mm -mm -mm, not a good idea. Warriors come out to play. <laughs> You're not playing. Then you wear the T-shirt day of game, and then we know how that game plays out and everything that goes with it. I got to ask, when you guys saw it as broadcasters and, and members of this team, what were you thinking? And what was everyone? I mean, I'm looking at Dylan Brooks on the screen. Did anybody say anything like, yo, just change the shirt, do something? I, no, I'm not sure what was said in, in the locker room. I, I don't think Dylan, uh, if, of all people, had any problem with it. You see Dylan's like Fair. sitting right next to me, dog. We're going right out tonight. <laughs> um, but But we all know, um, and Tari may not know just the respect that you have to have for those world champs. And, and, and Chandler Lou, we knew when we got in the league, we didn't have respect for some of them OGs because they didn't turn into what they were until it was playoff time, until it was time for them to, you know, kind of become themselves. And, and it just put that, it just woke up the Warriors just a little bit uh, enough. And they've been playing great basketball. You guys know it. Draymond is, is, is you know, Draymond does some silly things. He goes over the board sometimes. But the thing Draymond knows is how to get his team motivated. He's willing to sacrifice himself. So if people don't know, Draymond made the first comment and said, I don't care about the Warriors, uh, about the Rockets. I don't care about the Rockets. So sorry, like, you don't care about my guys. We, we ain't worried about you. You know, like, what, what's going on? So you, Come on. Is, you, know, you know, the problem is he wasn't playing. That's the beat. Now, if Dylan Brooks or Fred or, or uh, one of the Jalen, one of those guys wear the shirt, Completely different. But if you can't contribute to the to how this game is gonna go, we ain't trying to hear it, bro. We ain't trying to hear it. Like, get out the way. You know oh, those nah. guys. You don't play. Lou, Lou, make no mistake, Lou, you're right. It's it's a lesson learned. And um, I learned one of those lessons one time. You know, I was on the bench in Charlotte and you know, guys, Chandler, you know, I run my mouth. I'm always talking, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I, I didn't just run my mouth on TV. I was running my mouth in the game. And um, Bean came into town. Kobe came into town. And I'd always talk trash. Man, Bre Brevin Knight done this, done this, slapped me on the bench, dog, upside my head and said, do not say anything to Kobe. <laughs> do not wake him up. Because if you wake him up, I got a guard. We got to see him. Don't zip it. If he shoot, he meant just silence the whole time. So, Yes, young fella wasn't out there. Um, he has that type of motor. He's a dog. Even you heard Draymond say, I fool with Tari Eason personally. He called him out. So those are the things that our young guys are going to have to learn is is the mental game, okay? Like the mental game. So they ain't scared of nothing. They just got to learn how to fine tune it. That's why we're so excited in Houston. Yeah, my my problem was obviously that he wasn't <laughs> playing, but also poked a bear, but not not the Warriors. <laughs> Any, anybody but the anybody. Warriors. But Ryan, he talked about Jalen Green. He was on fire since the beginning of March, averaging 26, 6, and 4. Um, just dominant. Do, do you think he has it to be the number one guy on a playoff team? And when Sangoon comes back, how are they going to mix these two together and have them both playing at high levels and have it work as one of these duos going forward? Man, I love that question, Chandler. The, the main thing that I pulled away, does he have it? It is that thing that you can't really explain. Well, why did Lou Will, every time the buzzer was ready to go off, he found a way to just make something happen. Jalen Green has it. But Jalen Green this season has been going through this refining process through one of the best coaches I've seen where Emei's like, dog, I don't care who you are, what you look like. If you're not defending, if you're not doing the little things, you're not going to be playing. And when Jalen bought into that, everything went like this. Everything has gone like this. So, yes, I think he has it. It's on Jalen to put in the work. It's on Jalen to humble himself. And these are the things that we saw. And him to understand, hey, man, this is what it's going to look like for me to be the guy. Now, since he's been on the flamer, what he was happening, and you guys know this, and Lou, we've seen this happen when you get hot, he's been getting trapped and double teamed, and he'll have the ball in the pick and roll, and guys are going to get the ball out of his hands. Dallas, our, our guys lost to that, that Dallas game. 
J. Kidd, off rip, double team, get the ball out of his hands. Go make him a passer. So as you said, how are he and Alperen Shingun going to fit? Alperen Shingun is a guy who's been all season long getting double teamed on the block. He didn't see single coverage until he saw Wimby. And I drank, think he dropped about 45 on Wimby. We remember that, okay? That's the first time that young boy saw single coverage. So now you got a guy to pick a roll, but you got a double team to get the ball out of his hands. When he gets double teamed, what's he going to do? I'll go eat, big fella. Up he go eat, big fella. He's got some of the most unbelievable hands. He may have eyes in the back of his head and arg- in the back of his head, and he may be arguably right behind uh, Jokic and Sabonis, the best passing big, one of the best passing bigs in the NBA. So um, that's how they're going to fit. The challenge for those two, if we're going to be transparent, defense. If those two can defend, be in the right spot, be a, a, a student uh, in, in the defensive playbook and adjustments, now we're talking about Houston really cooking – uh, at a national scene. Yeah, it's crazy, crazy times. Let's talk a little Victor Wimbanyama, shall we? He's a tall man. You're a tall man uh, against Houston. He was, he almost had the quad double and I am just waiting for it to happen at some point. What do you see when you see him? I mean, I don't want to say how amazed are you? I just assume you are. So go on. One beetle, of course you're going to go straight to Spurs. You couldn't <laughs> wait to get to Spurs and beetle. No, okay. No. We know, we know about that. Um, I it every day, man, I, <laughs> I think he's going to, all seriousness, I think he's going to be the face of the NBA. Um, he, he, he kind of got the swagger. Uh, he understands American culture. Uh, he's big. Uh, you, you know, big guys normally aren't marketable. Why? Cause we don't dribble, shoot three. We don't have the highlights. This dude is a walking highlight. Um, I remember talking to shout out Sean Elliott, man, the legend Sean Elliott yes. and Sean was like, Ryan, cause I asked him the same thing. He said, Ryan, Every time I see him, he does something I've never seen in the sport of basketball. Guys, we, I, we've been playing since we were little. We're in our 40s now. We got guys in the 50s and 60s. They are saying they're seeing something from him that you've never seen in the sport of basketball. Easy. I'm, I'm, I'm 37, Ryan. Take it Shut easy. Shut up, Take Lou. Easy. You're almost 40. Hey. <laughs> Hey, big fella, big fella, you're on the other side now, big fella. I'm 39, but I count 40, okay? Big fella, you're on the other side now. You got to accept it. We behind the mic now, big fella. Yep, yep. <laughs> but in all, in all seriousness, I think that Pop has taken this as a refining year for Wimby. I think he just threw him in a swimming pool, said, dog, figure out how to swim. Um, I think the game when he made out him guard out P one on one, he tried to teach him a lesson. Oh, you don't want to do things my way. Play him straight up. Young fella's going to drop a drop 45 on you. So I, I think for him, he just got to figure things out. And as they put the right pieces around him, it's going to be special. With all due respect, the Spurs didn't even know how to get him the basketball. He could, he could go, he could go 40 and 20. If all he did is rim run block shots <laughs> And, and, and play around the rim. And the fact that he has a bag, so now um, he's a matchup nightmare. I, I think he's going to be that guy. And now Wimby, uh, he keeps on the progress that he's at. Uh, Michelle, our challenge is going to be how many championships does he get because he's far too good not to dominate. And uh, he, he's, in that, he's in that realm where LeBron should be giving that torch to him as long as those pieces are put in place around him. He, 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 it's, it's, it's the craziest thing. Because just, just at a simple level, I'll say this as a finish up, he can take the big guys outside and mix. He can take, and the challenge for him is taking the little guys in the paint and holding his ground. Right now, he can't hold his ground, but uh, when he figures that out, <laughs> it's, oh. it's going to be it's gonna be a problem. I know there's a three on one moment last night in that Grizzlies game. It was just a, it's funny video to watch if, you know, if you're bored, um, I want to bring back a quote you had in 2019 about Giannis said he was uh, the most overrated in basketball. Well, fast forward a, a couple years here and now we've arrived. Have you changed your mind at all on Giannis? Where do you have him now? He was overrated. He was, he was overrated at that time. So that wasn't for the Hoopers. That was for my colleagues. Let's, let's put this on record. I'm glad you brought this up. This is for a lot of my colleagues at ESPN that were overhyping and calling Giannis. And I, by the way, I love Giannis. Don't mistake none of this. That were saying Giannis is Michael Jordan. Giannis is this. And his numbers were astronomical. astronomical. They were there. So I was saying at that moment, he should walk away with the championship, all that. At that moment, he was overhyped at that moment. But I love Giannis. I love his story. He's a throwback. He plays every night. He's a dog. He works. He loves his teammates even more so. He take care of his family. If he goes somewhere, his brothers be right there with him. So um, at that moment, I did not think that they were putting him on the right pedestal. 
I think he's deserving of all his all of his accolades he's put in the work. So when I say over over hype, that was from my ESPN colleagues, not for the real hoopers. We all knew he had to develop that jump shot. We knew that young that young boy was a dog, and we knew the right pieces need to be put around him. So that was not a, a shot to him or anything like that. It was just more so for, for for my colleagues at the time that were like, we're looking at Michael Jordan. It's like, nah, he's not Mike right now. He's he's on that pace. Uh, but they, so that's that's what it was for. That's what it's for. I love me some Giannis, man. Shout out to Freak and hope, and get well soon, brother. Speaking of uh, <laughs> staying on my walk, you and I both play for Doc. You play for him on two separate occasions. Um, they've had their struggles in Milwaukee since since bringing Doc in. Right decision, wrong decision, bringing him in mid season. What what's your opinion on bringing Doc in? This was going to be tough for anybody to do it mid season. And I'm not sure who who pulled the trigger on it, but Doc is in a lose lose situation. You know they had the scheme set up; uh, they're already prepared. Uh, whether you love to hate uh, uh, Coach Griffin, I always believe in writing things out. So I think a mid season change that should have happened before. So I don't know if there was something they wanted to do before the season, but that timing uh, was horrible because not right now. Doc is going to be uh, the the scapegoat. And I don't think that all the blame um, necessarily should go to him. Uh, but at the end of the day, man, it's, it puts him in a very, very tough situation. Um, for Doc, we know this. It, it takes you a while to kind of get used to what Doc wants to wants to do. And he can draw it up the X's and O's with absolutely the best of them. So I, I think the challenge was to say, hey, we know Doc was able to go in. And we're all going to go back to those Boston days with that big three. And he made things work with some big personalities. Doc knows how to manage personalities. But Doc has to go back and get him another chip the way that he did in Boston. So I think they maybe they wanted to get somebody more respected. I think the timing was off. So whoever pulled the trigger on it, I, I think it, it was it was poor judgment on that time. Either wait till the season rise out, let Adrian have a chance, see if he can get a championship or do it before the season. But when it happened, um, I, I didn't agree with it, and I think it is tough. And I think for, for Doc, he's just going to have to take accountability. He's going he's to have to eat all the criticism right now. And, and Doc's been there before. He was booed in Boston, and he was celebrated a few seasons after. So um, he's been around this league long enough. Oh, you got your own personal emojis going up right there. Yeah, I see, you I guys see like Chandler, I see Chandler's a little curious with the thumbs yeah. up keep popping up. No, I, oh, I, I, I was going to ask y'all the same thing. I don't know if the producers are just showing me love, <laughs> hyping me up right now. Like, I, don't know, I don't know what's going on. Dude, hold him up. Hold him up. Hold him up. Say, like, things will happen. We can just do an hour of this, y'all. Oh, Is that no, me? Oh, oh, snap. <laughs> we're well, wizards, y'all. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing right hey, now. Ryan, hey. Ryan. Appreciate the time. Love the nice open floor plan. A big fan of that as well. I uh, hope you'll come back soon. <laughs> <Enjoy>. <laughs> hey, any any time. This, hey, Chandler and Lou, I love seeing y'all on the dark side, fellas. Congratulations yeah. to the dark side. You're killing it. Look at it, man. Y'all know we go way back. Shout out to y'all boys. Could not be happier. And Beetle, by, by the by time you bring your boy on, man. By the time you bring your boy on. I know, on. right? We waited. We, we, we're saving you for the end there. We're saving you for the end. Uh, we appreciate it. We'll talk soon. We'll be back. Anytime, guys. Run it all, the running back, yeah, yeah. Run it all, run it back, run it all, run it back, run it all, run it back. Let's continue our look around the league, shall we? DeMontis Simonis. Oh, the streak's over. 61 straight double doubles, eight points, 13 rebounds, five assists against Oklahoma City. They lost, but they did get to stay in the eighth spot so far because, you know, the Lakers lost as well. The the scoring and the shooting for Simonis has been down both since the All Star break. And I. You know, I ask you, Chandler, could there be a reason for that? Does it become a distraction? Is the fact that maybe they're not getting enough respect? Like, what what could lead to that? Well, I mean, there's there's expectations every single night for him to perform. I would think it would come with the rebounds, not the points. I feel like he could get 10 points in his sleep. But we knew this would come to an end. Remember there was a show where he said, you know, I think we compared it to Wilt's record. Like, is he even going to mm. get – and there was just no way that, that history – will never be broken that that was insane but again there there's he's he's their player through the post he's gonna see double teams he's gonna when they're not in transition they're kind of playing through him if fox isn't going up and down um and again i think we would kind of we made him the most underrated player with the getting an all-star snub with not getting the recognition with everybody always sleeping on the sacramento king so I do think there is a little bit of that where now that we talk about him being underrated so much, we do put this expectations of him now to perform and be great every single night. So now when he doesn't do it, the streak ends, we're kind of shocked, but 
no matter what, 61 double doubles, the amount of triple doubles he's had this year, he's had of a hell of a season. He's put himself in shape to possibly make all NBA team without being an all-star, which is pretty cool. Um, he has struggled as of late, but again, he's had a great year and this is a, this is an unbelievable streak that we knew would come to an end at some point. Um, Lou Chandler, I'd like to present you with a video. If you don't mind, just when you think you've seen it all, he gives you one more little spicy moment right there. What do we think about this guys? I mean, it's kind of dumb. Yeah, you just... I thought it was. I thought it was a good move. I, I hadn't good seen move. this. I mean, it's not like the greatest thing I've ever seen. Be the lie, just be honest with you. But I, it is impressive, and I and I think a lot of these things are gonna continue to be a, be impressive to us based on just how tall he is. We we've never seen this before. Even with Kevin Durant and guys of that size, they get straight to the point. They don't really have to do these things or or got that deep in their bag. But to see Wimby do this. Really impressive. We've seen this move a thousand times, but to see it from a 7'4 kid is impressive. Yeah, that, that's, the, that's the difference is I've seen this move done before by guards, by Kyrie, but you don't see it with someone his size. You And you also, you see this like at the park. You see this in an all-star game, not in the middle of the paint, uh, you know, <laughs> where the other guys dig in there and the guys help in middle. It's a great, it's an outrageous move that shouldn't ever even be attempted in an NBA game. And he just does it so gracefully and then just gets American to the influence, man. It's the American influence on him, man. He loves <laughs> <Yeah>. our game. <laughs> Shout out to Sham God. <laughs> yep. He loves it. And there's going to be something every time. I cannot wait. Uh, there was a moment in the Knicks game last night, y'all. Tori Craig. <laughs> this this <laughs> Michelle was one of the craziest. Lou, look at the score of this game. Does, is it up there? I don't even know if we have it up there. I mean, it was they a pretty were, close game. Uh, they, I mean, were down, like, they, were, they were down nine points when this happened. <laughs> so there it is. Yeah. <laughs> In the second <laughs> hey, but, but uh, listen, you're down nine. Drummond, read the room, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? What the hell are yeah. you doing? First of all, yeah, but this is a, first of all, this is a blown play to begin with. This is a bonehead play to even like, what are you doing? <laughs> But Dre, you couldn't possibly think this was for uh, you. Kobe White, quote of the night. That's a really <laughs> dumb stuff to do. The fact that it was the second quarter and they were down nine and he did this, this might be the greatest Shaq and a fool of all time. This, I mean, this it is, is. This definitely takes the cake for Shaq and the fool. I think they get a double T on this. Both of them get a double Shaq thing. This is a double Shaq. And he said, this is a triple Shaq thing. <laughs> Oh my God, like and, they were down, and they were down nine. <laughs> it's eh. like, what did Billy it's D awesome. say to him? What did Billy D, this is like a, this is a Honestly, this is a All jokes aside, Chandler, plays like that can get Billy Donovan fired and he might not have anything to do with it. Plays like that. Of control of your yeah, locker plays room. like that. Players don't respect you. Uh, this could get Billy <laughs> D fired, bro. It's like a warm up yeah, line. Yeah, plays like that might get him first thing cooking to the Kentucky. Ooh. And by the way, shout out the Knicks and Jalen Brunson, another 40 plus point night. Just want to make sure we get that in there. Uh, quick, quick break. When we come back, some more run it back. Oh, no. <laughs> that's not real. That's a, that's a poster. Run it up. The running back. Run it back. Run it up. Woo. If Steph win this year, you got to throw him in the top five all time. I mean, that's, that's no denying. If they win this year, mm -hmm. Steph is top five all the time they win. If they win. Interesting. Guys, What do we agree with part of that, any of that, all of that? Where are we? Chandler? I mean, they're not, they're not winning this year, so it's a silly argument. But it, is he top five? Top five is tough because you got to look at you know, MJ and LeBron. Then you got to go to the old school guys – like Wilt and Russell and Kareem, but it, it, top 10 for sure. And I think okay. he is a top five talent ever. I think he's the greatest point guard ever. The way he's changed the game, the way he shoots, we can go on and on and on about that. And the fact that, yeah, if he gets the championship somehow, some way this season, oh my for, his, God. for his fifth, then I think we got an argument. I do think that's far-fetched, but I, don't, I have no problem with top 10. Okay, top 10, possibly top five. <laughs> to make a long rant short. 
we got to stop this compare culture in basketball because we're always going to have a few spots that's always reserved for the old, old timers and this and that. Steph Curry is top five of our time. In the last 15, 20 years, he's the best shooter we've ever seen. He got the championships to go with it. He got the records to go with it. So I agree with half of this, but I think Steph Curry is top five and he's top five of our time. Okay, there it is. All right, Lou, you're up next. Jamal Crawford said he thinks that the Lakers should trade Anthony Davis to extend LeBron's window. Do you agree? <laughs> nah, my brother tripping. He tripping on this. <laughs> for who? <laughs> nah, for who? Like, yeah, for, I don't know. For who? Like, yeah, like, that's not going to change. That's not going to change LeBron going into his 22nd year at 40 years old. <laughs> you can bring up a talent in the world. He's merely going to be, uh, I just, no, this is just a bad idea. So I, I disagree. Jamal is tripping on this. Yeah, I don't I don't know that there's who you can get for Anthony Davis that's right now and his prime that can help LeBron win more than LeBron James can. Can they go younger? Sure. Can they get some assets? Yeah, but that's not gonna help LeBron's window to win right now. That's not yeah, very Jamal Crawford like. There must have been logic in it. He's a yeah, that's logical man. He didn't, yeah, he didn't have a lot of hot takes. So yeah. No. No, no, no. He's, yeah, he's pretty. Uh, but this next one is definitely a hot take, Lou. Uh, Tony Kukoc said that Nikola Jokic isn't at the level of Vladi Divac or Dino Raja at the center position. Very specific. Is this the craziest take we've ever heard? <laughs> this is by far one of the craziest things I've heard in a very long time. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what Tony Kukoc got, got against uh, uh, the Joker, but this sounds, this sounds ridiculous. If not better than those two gentlemen, respectfully already, he's definitely in the conversation. So to say that, I'm not sure where this is coming from, but this is this is a wild tale. Yeah, those two guys, he's in the level of the guys I just mentioned before. The, the, <laughs> the greats. Yeah, the, the MJ These and the LeBron. Guys, no disrespect to them, but Jokic is... We shouldn't even say his name with these two cats. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't that, that feels know personal. Where. That feels personal. Yeah, that, he might, I don't know what that is. So yeah, that's mm. crazy. I'm going to go there's down some, that rabbit there's hole. There's some personal beef there for sure. You don't just say that. You don't. It's <laughs> insane. Uh, oh, this th we're thinking greatest quotes of all time when I read the next one. Shaq was asked which NBA player he finds entertaining enough to buy a ticket and watch go play. His answer, Ben Simmons, because he'd like to learn how you can make $80 million and play 55 games, Chandler. Well, I know a little <laughs> something about that. Uh, so <laughs> So I'll take this. I mean, it's funny. I love it. The Ben Simmons, yeah. the whole situation is crazy. And this is just Shaq being Shaq. He's obviously kidding, but this is, it's, it's, it's hilarious. It's, I think it's fantastic. Uh, I'm going to skip down here. Jason Williams, former heat guard, thinks if Tracy McGrady worked like Kobe Bryant, he might've been the best ever, Lou. Yes or no? Um, if anybody would work like Kobe Bryant, they could have been the best ever. Uh, Kobe man, Bryant was a bad man when he came uncle. to work. So, not half proof. At the talent. Come on, guys. All right, that's it for Wednesday. Thursday is next. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up.